<coughs> In this video, we're going to talk about objective functions, and we'll be taking everything from the concept to the coded implementation. Here you can see the completed notebook along with the narrative, which you can view and download by clicking the link in the description or visiting shihinrastami.com directly. Let's switch to a Jupyter notebook and get started. The very first thing we want to do is load in our extensions and then import the packages. We're going to use the usual suspects like NumPy and Pandas and also use Plotly Express for our visualizations later. So let's have a brief introduction to objective functions. Objective functions are perhaps the most important part of any evolutionary algorithm, while simultaneously being the least important part too. They're the most important because they encapsulate the problem that the algorithm is actually trying to solve. And also, in a way, they're unimportant because they have no real algorithmic part in the operation of the algorithm itself. Put simply, objective functions expect some kind of solution input, in this case, the problem variables. And they use these variables to calculate some kind of output, which in this case would be considered the objective values. These objective values can then be considered how the problem variables of a solution have actually scored or performed with respect to the current problem. For example, the input could be the variables that define the components of a vehicle. The objective function could be a simulation which tests the vehicle in some kind of environment, and the objective values could be the average speed and ride comfort of the vehicle. We would then use these objective values to determine how well the vehicle actually performed. In this figure, we've highlighted the stage at which the objective function is typically invoked, the evaluation stage. It's after this that we find out whether a potential solution to the problem performs well or not. And we have some kind of idea about the trade-offs between the multiple solutions using the objective values. The stage that typically follows this is the termination stage, where we may use this information to figure out whether we need to stop the optimization process or carry on. So, using examples, let's have a look at objective functions in general. Now, what do we mean by an objective function? Well, we can express this objective function mathematically. It might look like this. We have function f, which takes in the solution input x. Now, within this function, we may have many other functions, which use all of x or some of x. Typically, we express x as a vector. So here we can see x is made up of the elements x1, x2, and so on up to xn. In this case, n specifies the number of problem variables our solution has. Now, let's make the assumption that the number of decision variables for our problem is 8. So in this case, n is equal to 8. We can create such a solution using Python and initialize it with random numbers. Now, in the output, you can see the random numbers that make up the eight problem variables for this solution. Now, we have a single solution of randomly initialized values for x1 through to x8. Keep in mind that when you're running this notebook for yourself, you should expect different numbers because we're generating numbers at random. Let's have a look at our generic objective function from earlier. This is a function which takes solution x as input, and then we use it for some calculation, giving us some output. The subscript m indicates the number of objective values we can expect to return. So, for a two objective problem, we can say m is equal to two. Now, for the sake of example, let's say that the first part to our objective function, which we'll refer to as f1, will calculate the sum of all elements in x. And f2 will calculate the product of all elements in x. We can express this mathematically like this. So let's take these equations and move them into Python. Now, let's invoke this function and pass in the solution x that we made earlier 
we're going to store the results in a variable named y. And again, in Python, it would look something like this. This has returned our two objective values, which determine the performance of the corresponding solutions problem variables. There is much more to an objective function than what we've covered here. And the objectives that we defined are entirely arbitrary and do not represent real world problems. Nonetheless, we've implemented a two objective function that we may wish to minimize or maximize. Let's use Python to generate 50 more solutions and calculate their objective values according to our earlier equations. This time, we won't print out all 50 of these solutions, but let's instead visualize all 50 of them using a scatter plot. And here we have it. We visualized 50 solutions in the objective space. In this video, we've covered the very basics in what we mean by an objective function. We've expressed the concept mathematically and then made a direct implementation using Python. We also generated a set of 50 solutions, calculated the objective values for each one and plotted them in the objective space using a scatter plot. Next time, we're going to look at a popular and synthetic objective function named ZDT1. We're going to follow a similar approach whereby we implement the Python function from its mathematical form. Here you can see the completed notebook along with the narrative, which you can view and download by clicking the link in the description or visiting shihinrastami.com directly. Thank <laughs> you.